Hello, Harry Winston here for Online Flute Lessons here. Today we're talking about the study number two in A minor from the Boehm 24 Caprice Etudes. This study is very flowy and very tumbling and has lots of arpeggiated movement in it. And that means that we have to be careful that we don't let the flute tell us how to play. And we don't let the flute run amok. What do I mean by that? Well, going up an arpeggio on the flute we get exponentially louder. That means we get louder very quickly, especially when we get to the middle of the middle register and then going beyond that when we get into the top register. Notes really sing out. We need to be careful that, um, especially when those notes are at the end of a phrase or at the end of a little um, segment, we need to be careful we don't give those an uninvited accent. Equally, when we're going down in the flute, we can often lose tone as we go down. Uh, naturally we don't produce, or it is much harder to produce, a full rich tone on, on the flute as we go down. So we need to be careful of that too. How do we tackle this? Well, as ever, slow practice is essential. Being able to really experience and feel what pressure, what airflow we need for each of the notes in an arpeggio is essential. It becomes intuitive very quickly, but we really need to spend time listening and experiencing, feeling and noticing how much air we need to use. Look, for example, at the passage uh, bar three and four. We want to be careful that that E isn't louder than everything else. They're grouped in little groups of three. Obviously, the first of each group is the important note. That needs the weight. We need to let everything else from that go. If you can't do that under tempo, there's no chance of playing it up to tempo. Play it, experience the pressure you need for each of those notes, and that will guide you. Also, I would suggest thinking about each of those little arpeggiated three note blocks as a single event, ya da da, not da da da. The more we think up to top notes and push up to them too hard, they stick out. We need to try and give all our energy to the first note in such a unit as that, and then let all of the other notes be the sort of response to that. Really giving everything to the G sharp there and letting the other two notes um, trail off, as you will. We also have this motion comes up a lot in all sorts of um, uh, music that we play. This sort of figuration where we go ya da di, ya da di, ya da da, ya da di, getting progressively lower in, uh, as the sequence descends. We need to get down to that note, so we need to have the top note not so much, and then the following note needs to be nice and full. That's quite some gymnastics, and again, slow practice will help you there. But also, think about descending, especially large leaps and jumps um, in such motion, um, as a controlled fall. The more you dive um, as we go down into the flute, the more you really push down, the harder things are. As I've said in other videos, it's counterintuitive, but the more gently you can manage to play the flute, the bigger the sound you'll make. The same with articulation. The more gently and precisely you can play, the better articulated things will sound. I think a lot of us think that blowing harder, putting lots and lots of air, you know, going red in the face, knitting our, um, knitting our brow, eyebrows together, that'll achieve a big sound. Um, at best, it'll achieve a forced sound. What you need to be able to do is manage to get these bottom notes accurate in the way that you're blowing. So keep open, keep the flute open, keep your head open. We're always playing up to the gods, okay? And keep the angle that you're blowing into the flute nice and steep to compensate. Don't close everything up. That can often feel like it's easier, but it will give us a closed sound and it'll actually reduce your flexibility. Again, it feels a little bit counterintuitive because it's an easier thing to do, but try and open everything up. Really work at that. Might be, might be more difficult at first, but actually the benefits will start to show quickly. Let's have a little think about the articulation in this piece. 
Now, there is a lot of articulation, but the piece wants to feel very flowing and very uh, like a long, uninterrupted line. So we need to be very careful in uh, the application of the tongue. Try and use the tongue and get the t -t 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 nice and precise t -t sound. I would in fact practice the entire piece legato, really gluing the notes together. You can sometimes even have things sounding quite choppy when you're playing legato. If you don't really concentrate on having an absolutely uh, crystal jet stream of air coming out, you really need to keep that pressure. Be wary of, of keeping that um, pressure in the, uh, in the air column. Imagine squeezing out toothpaste from a tube. We need that sort of thing to go. And yes, it can get less and more, but we don't want it sort of coming out in splatters and, and, and splutters. We want it to be coming out in a nice long stream. Once you've got it sounding absolutely super without staccatos in them, start putting the staccatos back in. But be aware that staccatos often come with their own accents, their own often uninvited accents. Yes, actually in this piece we have accents as well as staccatos, so we give, need to give them a bit of an extra shove. But even then, be aware that it's sort of like adding another it's already got an inherent accent in it, but adding another accent that's written down, be aware that it can suddenly become completely overwhelming and uh, rather choppy sounding. So be sparing when you see an accent on a staccato, unless you're you know, really playing something super secco short, you know, some Shostakovich or some Prokofiev. Often we can um, sound quite precise without giving it too much of a shove. Um, also in this passage that we just looked at a minute ago, um, bars three and four, we've got a sort of hemiola rhythm. We've got units of three um, across four. Give them a little, uh, give them a little weight. We're not talking sort of um, Latin American rhythms. We're not going quite that far, but um, we do like to chop and change and it keeps things interesting um, to listen to and to play. So whenever you see anything that looks like that, it's not, you know, not really strictly a hemiola, I suppose, or maybe it is, do let me know. Um, try and play into them, they're really um, rhythmically um, interesting. I think that just about does it for this study. Um, if you have any particular questions though, do feel free to drop me a line. If you've enjoyed the video, do subscribe to the channel. Also, if you'd like to come for a lesson, do drop me a line and have a look at onlineflutelessons.co.uk. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.